Hello, I'm Jade. What we're talking about today is how to use apostrophes. So I know there are going to be a few native speakers watching this video. Um, it really is time to learn how to use apostrophes correctly. It's not that hard. There are a few simple rules and we're going to talk about them today. We we'll start with the easy stuff and eventually we'll get to the, um, the more advanced rules, but you'll probably never need to use the more advanced rules. But anyway, we'll get there in the second part of the lesson. So um, what I want to start with is mentioning my school name. Haberdashers asks Hatcham College. This is where I learned how to use apostrophes. Um, but at first I cheated because I've got really, had a really long school name and I always remember needing to write this on exam papers. Um, but I think when I, when I started the school, I probably didn't know how to use apostrophes. So I memorized where the apostrophes went. I didn't understand why they went there, but I memorized them. So the apostrophes were like this. Uh and uh. I'm going to explain why. So what's haberdashers? Um, a haberdasher is a old fashioned word for somebody who makes garments, makes clothes. And all together, they, they were together in what's called a trade guild. And this is quite an old fashioned thing now. Maybe it doesn't really exist so much, but they had some charitable objectives. And so they were a group of these haberdasher people. And one of them, was a man called Robert Ask. So this is somebody's name, person. And um, Hatcham is a place in London. And college is a quite a posh name for a school. So you put all those words together and that's my school. But let's talk about why these apostrophes. So the apostrophe is outside the S here because we're talking about more than one haberdasher. That's the rule, more than one thing and possession, the apostrophe goes on the outside. Why the apostrophe here? When the possession belongs, one thing belongs to one person, we put the apostrophe before the S. So the school belongs to um, ask, Mr. Ask. So that's why the apostrophe is there. Maybe that's confusing. Let's break it down and look at the rules one by one using apostrophe. So number one, possession. Another meaning of possession is when, um, when you lose your mind, you're taken over by something. But the, more, the, the meaning I'm talking about here is when something belongs to you, when you own something. So here's a man, here's his car. The man's car is there. This sentence means the car belonging to the man. And to show possession, I put the apostrophe before the S. I'm talking about just one man. So the apostrophe goes before the S. And um, same really in these other examples. That's George's car. Why, why one here? Well, here we're not talking about apostrophes and possession. This is something else. That means um, that is, that means something else. This is our apostrophe with possession. Um, his name is George. It's a car belonging to George. That's George's car. And to show something belongs to someone, um, when we've got a name, we put the apostrophe after their name and then we put the S there. And we don't, we can also do it with places. So we've got London's best fish and chips. The best fish and chips belonging to London, and again, we do apostrophe S. So when we're talking about possession, that's quite clear. It's okay, yeah? But now we have an exception, and sometimes there's a lot of confusion about this, and sometimes people get quite annoyed. Um, but what I'm going to say is that there are two, there are two ways to show um, possession when, when the name ends with an S. So it's preference, really. Some people prefer this way. Some people prefer this way. All you need to do is just pick one and be standard. Always, if you pick one, just use that way all the time. Don't, definitely don't do it one way in an essay and then get a bit scared and do it a different way because you'll be wrong then. You need to pick, you definitely need to pick a way. So Chris is a name ending in S. So 
we can, I don't like saying this, but we can say the girlfriend belonging to Chris um, by putting the apostrophe on the outside of the S. So it's, although in grammar it means the same as these examples, here we're not putting the extra S. So that brings us to the second example. Here's a, here's a common Welsh name, Jones. It ends in S. So you might choose to show possession when the name ends in S by putting apostrophe S um, on your name. You can do that as well. So there are two options here. He is Mr. Jones's business partner, the business partner belonging to Mr. Jones. When we come back, we've got more rules for using apostrophes and to show possession. Are you ready for the advanced rules of apostrophes? Are you sure you're ready? You can do it. Okay, for collective nouns, what's a collective noun? A collective noun is one that we don't put S with. Um, they have their own words already. So we don't say women's with an S because women means more than one. That's what a collective noun is. Men means more than one man and children means more than one child. So they're a little bit different to just a regular noun where you can just put S on the end. So when we have a collective noun, we have a different apostrophe rule. So what we do is we put the collective noun down and then we do apostrophe S. Not that hard. The women's group meet weekly. This means the group belonging to the women, more than one woman. Next sentence. The men's toilets are disgusting. You bet they are. Not that I go in them. Uh, more than one man and toilets belonging to more than one man. We put men and then apostrophe S, as I said before. And last example. The children's department is upstairs. The place where you can go and buy children's things, delightful children's clothing and toys and stuff. The department belonging to the children is upstairs. So we put the collective noun and then apostrophe S to show that possession. Let's compare the collective nouns, apostrophe rules, to just normal nouns where we put an S to show more than one. So we have one boy, and boys means more than one boy. It could be two boys, could be, you know, could be a hundred boys. Um, so how do we show possession for more than one boy? The boys' school is excellent. Not full stop. Um, this means the school belonging to more than one boy. Um, there would be more than three boys in the boys' school. Or maybe... It, it could have two meanings. It could be the general school belonging to the boys, or maybe if you were talking about two of your children, you had two boys, you could say it like this, the boys' school is excellent. Our next example, ladies. Uh, we have one lady, and the plural of lady is ladies. And these are some ladies doing yoga. The ladies' yoga class has started. Again, because we already have an S, we just put the apostrophe on the outside of the S. And that's that, really. Now we're getting to the apostrophe rules you might not use, but let's have a look at them. Tom and Pete's friend, Sean. What does that mean? Um, well, there's, there's, one, there's one Sean, and he's equally a friend of Tom and Pete. But we, we, don't, we don't put apostrophe S there. We just do it once. We just put it on, on, the, on the second name when we want to show that the possession is equal to um, both, of the, both of the subjects. So one Sean, equally friend of Tom, equally a friend of Pete. And that's how we show it with apostrophes. What about this one then? Lulu's and Angela's boyfriends. What does that mean? Well, um, this is the kind of example where you need to get it right because it has quite different meanings. Um, this sentence means Lulu has a boyfriend. This is, um, this is Lulu's boyfriend. He's saying, where's Lulu? 
And this is Angela's boyfriend. They're two, two separate guys, two separate girls. So if I do that, um, if, I, if I take the apostrophe S away there, it, then they share one boyfriend. I mean, some people do that, but um, you want to make sure you've got your grammar right there because you might be confused. So um, if possession is two separate things in your list, you have to do apostrophe S for uh, each subject. Let's look now at, um, um, what are these called? Compound nouns. Compound nouns when there's more than one word that go together to make a noun. So we have the example mother-in-law and mother-in-law is singular here. So how do we show possession? There are three words, where does the apostrophe go? Here's mother-in-law's party. One mother-in-law, one party. And um, so we put the apostrophe S there. And that shows us that we're just talking about one mother-in-law. It's just one woman having a party his mother-in-law's party. Whereas, if you have a plural compound noun, first what you need to do is write your um, compound noun down, which, would, which in the singular would be brother-in-law. And to make it a plural, you put the plural on the, on the first word there. So he, here we have brothers-in-law. If I wanted to make mother-in-law plural, I would say mothers-in-law. No, no, no S here, don't need an S there, just one S after the first word. Then we need to put in our apostrophe. Where do we put it? The brothers-in-law's company. So we put the S there before, that doesn't mean we put the apostrophe there. We put the apostrophe on the last word. Um, the same as the example for the singular. Um, the brothers-in-law's company. There are, there are two brothers-in-law. They've got different wives and they have a company together. That's what that sentence means. Now there's just one important thing that you need to know, especially you native speakers out there. Important. These pronouns don't take apostrophes. They don't take apostrophes at the end of the word. They don't take apostrophes like that before the S, they just don't. So um, you need to be, you need to watch out for that. You could, you could make a terrible apostrophe mistake and you don't want to do that. So uh, yeah, we're um, done with apostrophes now, but um, especially with apostrophes, it's good to practice. Um, you've listened, you've got a general idea, but it's really good to practice this. So I urge you to go and do the quiz for this one. Go to the Ingvid website, do the quiz, 10 questions. Try to get 10 out of 10. If you don't get 10 out of 10, come back and watch this video again in a couple of days. Try again. And um, if you like my video and my teaching, well, why not subscribe? You can subscribe on my Ingvid channel and on my second channel. Um, I've got two channels and yeah, that would be great. So um, until next time, um, yeah, see, see you later. Okay, bye.